back to another episode of The Only Playbook. I'm your host, Sweetheart. I have my co-host, Shashot, with me. No show, but in the house. He is too busy preparing for drafts, which are happening this week. Um, our draft is less than a week away now, Shashot. Um, mock drafts have been driving me crazy. It's to the point where I'm like done with those. I don't want to do anymore. All of my teams <laughs> look stacked when I do the mocks and it's just yep. basically setting me up for failure when I do the real thing. And you know, I know our drafts don't go the same way. How have you been feeling? Are you ready for draft day? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think just yet. Cause I was waiting for today, honestly, like for, in my personal opinion, everything before all these cuts mean like very little, right? So now we get to see exactly who's playing what position how many snaps who's getting so now i'm actually super excited but i am not confident yet because i need more information yeah all, just little things for people that get waived and then get picked up on other teams that can change depth charts we already had something that could potentially change the landscape of fantasy with zeke or not zeke with dalvin cook going to visit the cowboys if he ends up signing there i mean that's obviously going to come into play with this zeke rico daddle situation yeah. where everybody was getting those players really late on the flyer and now if you have a third guy in the mix it's just one nobody third, third less ideas. and nobody will want it so yeah yeah so you're definitely right. There are definitely, even for the Vikings, right? We're looking at a depth piece at the running back position. If it's a household name, all of a sudden you're like, whoa, could he possibly eat into Aaron Jones and Ty Chandler's right. situation? And then that changes everything. So uh, I'm with you. There's still a couple of days left for waivers and free agents to get picked up before the real season starts. But um we have a great show for the people today with drafts basically being this week, unless you decided to draft way too early, which we wouldn't advise. That'd be the biggest don't out of every list category is don't draft early. Um, <laughs> yeah, if you're drafting not. this week, we have do's and don'ts for draft day um, that we think are very, very important. New player, uh, in re reoccurring player, whatever the case may be. Sometimes these may seem very obvious, but it's not that obvious. So um, we definitely have some things that we think we can share that can help you achieve success during your draft day and not make a panic pick and do stupid shit. So, um, Shashot, I'll let you kick it off with your first one on your list. All right. I mentioned this in the past, but I'm going to mention again, it's really easy to get sucked into all the youth, right? It's, it's so easy to be like, Oh my God, I can't wait to be the first guy to have this guy on my team. I can't wait to talk about how good this blah, blah, blah is. Do not hold a daycare. That's exactly how I phrased it last time. This is exactly how I'm going to phrase it again. You are not drafting a team of potential, okay? Do not draft only rookies. Don't forget that this isn't about being cool. This is about winning championships. So you can bring up, you know, in your last round, you can waste a pick on, you know, so-and-so because nobody thought about him. But how likely is that man really to be a factor on your team? So, you know, think about the youth that are actually going to give volume. So, Number one, do not do is do not draft rookies. Rather, go for like the best available player in that position and just see what could happen. So uh, number one, it's not about being cool. It's about winning championships. I completely agree with you. I think it, when we did the mock draft like two episodes ago, my first two receivers are Marvin Harrison Jr. and uh, Garrett Wilson, basically youth. And then I think I had Malik Neighbors as well, right? So yeah. in that instance, that would be a direct thing here where I'm just drafting for youth. Uh, the only difference but, to me in that but, situation... Yeah, go yeah. Ahead. the volume. Look at the volume you 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 have. You know, it's like right. it's that one asterisk that you actually dwindled along. Right. So th there's certain caveats, and I think when you're doing the top echelon, even that comes with risk. I think we're just penciling in Marvin Harrison Jr. to be like a 170 target guy that's going to get a bunch of volume. Right? Mm -hmm. Is there a world where somehow that doesn't happen? Certainly, it's not realistic or likely, but we haven't seen that take place in the NFL yet. So it is completely a projection. So there is risk with that. Less risk, more so. But what I was going on with your point about don't just stack a daycare is the only time where I sometimes find value in drafting for upside in daycare is if it's like 13th, 14th, 15th round where I know like, yeah, could I go ahead and draft Ezekiel Elliott, I guess. And let's say Dalvin Cook is signed, right? Could I draft Ezekiel Elliott as the RB one for that team? He's like 30 years old. I don't know how much work he's going to get. When can I really know when to start that guy? Or could I take a flyer on Jalen Wright or Blake Corum who are both really young and the minute like somebody gets hurt, they are immediately not just relevant, but like yeah. a top 10 running back in fantasy football, right? right. That's where yeah. I think youth can be effective, but I'm with you. Like you don't want to be the guy that goes Marvin Harrison jr. Uh, Malik neighbors and, and somehow gets uh, Caleb Williams as your quarterback, right? That's just, we're putting way too much <laughs> stock in unproven talent. And that's really, really scary. Yeah. Uh, agreed. So my first do not, is do not fill out your roster draft. I think this is such a common mistake that people make. They are 
looking at my team on the side when they're doing their draft, they're like, boop, got a running back. Boop, got a receiver, right? You're still going best available. You go, boop, third round, you got another running back. So now you're like, I'm sitting two running backs and a receiver. So realistically, in the fourth round, if I'm a filling my needs, drafting to fill rosters, I'm looking at a quarterback, a tight end, or a potentially another receiver. When in reality, if there's a world where a RB1 falls to your lap and you need to go third running back, you absolutely should go third running back. I can't tell you how many mock drafts you showed I've done where – even in ours, you're like, dude, you can't start four receivers. I've drafted four receivers in the first five rounds so many times, so many times. Damn. And it still ends up working out pretty well for me. I know in the short run, it's not the best because I can't play all four of those guys. But the reality is if I have hypothetically, right, let's say if I have Cooper Cup somehow as my wide receiver four, or I have Stefan Diggs as my wide receiver four, DK Metcalf as my wide receiver four, because I went wide receiver, wide receiver, wide receiver, wide receiver. At some point, that guy is going to hold so much value that I'm going to be able to trade that guy and get somebody mm-hmm. back. And again, fantasy is not for week one, week two, week three. Yes, you mm-hmm. want to rack up as many wins as possible, but you're thinking long term. So I've been victim to this as well, where I'm like, oh man, like I did the two running backs and two receivers here. It'd be awesome if I just like solidified my quarterback, you know, like it'd just be really, it'd make my lineup look so pristine, but that's not what it's yeah. about, right? You're not looking, Agreed. you're not making your lineup look cool and like look sexy on paper. You want production, you want best value. So yes, I have done it. I have drafted four receivers in a row in mocks. I've drafted uh, running back, running back, running back to start the freaking draft. It's terrifying. Believe me, it's yeah. terrifying, <laughs> but there is a way to maneuver around that without feeling like you have to absolutely reach for somebody who you know doesn't yeah. need to be where they're at. So again, filling your roster or filling your starting lineup drafting is one of the biggest mistakes that people make. Do not do that. Yeah. And goes without saying, but nowadays just don't even draft the defense. Don't even draft the kicker. If you're, yep. if your league allows that, you can pick those up on the fly. Yeah, I I agree with how much deeper rosters and players it feels like are getting. I find great players in the 14th and 15th round that I'm like, you know what? I don't really need the kicker. Everybody else take all the kickers and I'll take whoever at defense. There's a lot of sleepers if you you know really dig deep. So um, you yeah. don't really need to take a position on that. I, I feel like I was a hard stance against that in the past because of the edge that I felt like a defense can get you. But there are too many variables and it's too long of a season, man. Too long of a season. Yeah. For sure. All right. Um, Next up on my advice for what to do and what not to do. I have another thing you should not do. You should not play or draft with emotions or loyalty. That sounds so bad, right? Like life is about emotions and loyalty and you should just embrace all of that. But when you're a competitor, when you're both, when all, all 10 of you or all 12 of you or all 14 of you or all 16 of you are going for one thing, right? You're, no, not everybody can win. Not everybody is going to get a little slice of the pie. There's most of the leagues, three guys get the, you know, the winnings and one guy gets most of the winnings, but it's not even about the second place, not even about third place. Only one person gets the money, right? So when it comes to that, when it comes to that being the final result, you can't play with loyalty, man. Like, Hey, you know, um, this guy after me, he's, he's got no quarterback. And if I take this quarterback, then he's going to get stuck with, you know, uh, Jared Goff, which is not even that bad thing, but you know, like, don't worry about that. This is not the time to worry about other people. This is about every man for himself. Right. And that a, another aspect of that is trade offers. Right. I know we talked a lot about, you know, we, we love making fun of our uh, friends who put like low ball offers out there and it gets really annoying. Cause like, you're like waking up at like 4 AM cause their phone goes beep. And you're like, Oh, Riaz proposes OBJ for Amon Ray St. Brown. Right. So like, so that shit's annoying as hell, but you can use that to your advantage when you're a little bit tricky with it. Right. Don't be obvious don't be stupid but also get tricky with it like draft all, all those youngsters sweetheart's talking about because you know they're going to go off later uh draft an extra running back draft an extra it, it all ties back together to what we've said earlier is that draft capital is huge and trade baits and trade value rises throughout the season so instead of worrying about you know uh, other people and who they not have stack your team up and make it powerful enough to where you can use them as trade baits uh for later yeah, I no, I absolutely agree. Um, it's it's again that seems so obvious in theory, right? Like we played enough to where we're like, man, that seems that seems very obvious. But just you wouldn't believe how many people, for some yeah. reason, don't think that that's obvious. Um, another thing that a lot of people use, and I just continue to hammer home the fact that it can't be your single source of resources. And this can be a do or a don't, right? Do not blindly follow ADP, which coincides with do 
create your own rankings, which rankings can be difficult when you're ranking 40 players, 50 players, if you're only doing 20, whatever. But the easiest way to create a rankings that I found is tiers. Create a tiers list for your players. This is tier one. This is tier two. The highest guy in tier two and the lowest guy in tier two. If you get both of them, you're going to be happy. That's what makes them in the same tier, right? Mm -hmm. I, I found that that is the most appropriate way or objective way to create a list for myself that I would advise for other people because it helps you every single step of the way. And that also leads me into what um, I think is a do in that situation is do go do reach for who you believe in. If you're in a spot in the draft that I consider a dead zone. So for example, this year I have been doing a lot of mock drafts and personally there's a, there's a fifth and sixth round or lull that I find based on how I'm projecting that, how I'm building my, or constructing my team where I want to wait for a quarterback, right? I don't want to reach for a quarterback, but the fifth and sixth round comes and I don't like a lot of the running backs or receivers specifically left on the board to me. Now these mocks can be wrong. And by the time we do real drafts, it's going to look really differently, but mm -hmm. I don't like the receivers or running backs. And I do like some of the quarterbacks left there. And I do like some of the tight ends left there. So what I have decided personally for myself is that is somewhere where I consider for myself a dead zone. Everybody's dead zone, maybe something different, right? You get to a certain round and you're like, you know what? I didn't, I, it wasn't immediate for me to click draft. You know, sometimes it's just instant. You're like, I'm waiting for that, waiting for that, waiting mm -hmm. for that. He's there. Boom. But the fifth, sixth round, even if guys like aren't, if it's like, it's just going as it should, I still struggle personally with finding a guy that I absolutely love in those rounds. So, um, there is a spot for me where I'm like, if it comes to that, I am okay. Scrolling down what, what ADP would consider reaching, but I don't consider that reaching because it's a guy I feel way better about. Don't be afraid to do that. And so my, 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 uh, I guess short version of all that is again, everybody has a part of the draft where they're like, Hmm, I don't really know what I want to do here. And, and whether you realize it or not, that to you is going to be your dead zone. So if that's your dead zone, don't fear scrolling down a little bit more. Do not fear that because again, ADP is simply an average across experts in the industry and just in quotes, because what do you define as an expert? Everybody can say they're an expert, right? So that's why you need to be your own expert if you want to be serious about this. Yeah. So all that to say, reaching is not a bad thing. As long as you <laughs> value that person, you can reach. Look at this. Look at this. Look at my notes I have in front of me. It says reach, <laughs> forget, forget ADP. ADP. Like amongst all these other notes, like that is some, that's the only thing on this whole page I have double underlined. Reaching is not a bad thing. It's just, you know, these are other people's opinions. And one thing you should know about making your own decisions is they're never going to be good enough if you can't even be uh, accepting of your own decisions, right? So reach, reach and forget yeah, about I, the rest. I think you're you're almost hitting like a weird psychological thing that I don't want to go down a rabbit hole on. Or it's like people are afraid to make their own yeah. decisions. They want oh, others yeah, to sure. make those decisions for them. For sure. So that when when it inevitably fails, if it does, yeah. they are not the reason yeah. that it failed. Exactly. And it's just, exactly. It's a terrible thing. It's a terrible nope. thing. It's beautiful. I love it because I know all the friends that do that. You know, I can literally name you all of them off the top of my head, but I can't put them on the spot. Um, so yeah, it's it's beautiful because they have to fix that in order to be a better fancy player. And they do. Like they most likely they haven't done that yet. Um, all right. So another uh don't for me. So I guess I'm just gonna do all don'ts because that was the reaching was the do. Uh, yeah. so what I don't do which goes along with what we kind of just talked about is don't fall off the runs. Don't, like I mentioned last time, I used a really uh, vulgar diarrhea uh, explanation, you know, like, you know, it's not like you don't just because other people have diarrhea, you don't have to follow the runs and also have diarrhea. Meaning if quarterback is finally going off the screen and like end of round four or even, you know, round five and you see Josh Allen go, you, everybody's heart rate goes up like by five beats. Like it's just, that's just what happens because it opens up a different playing field and it opens up other people to start panicking. And and I, I, I love doing that on like mock drafts and stuff because it's, it's, it just works to the T you're like, you fun, you know, using like some bullshit, uh, reason you just draft your first defense, which is typically the 49ers or something along those lines. And then you'll see the rest of the draft. Like here come the, here come the defenses, right? So don't follow this run because this is going to set you up for failure because this again ties into everything else we talked about. Go get your studs. Don't forget to be, don't forget to reach, um, uh, or don't be afraid to reach, you know, and don't draft 
you know, this and that. Everything we've talked about so far follows in the same path, and this goes right along with it, is you have to be your own individual. Do not follow the runs. Do not question your strategy. You've spent what, like, I mean, most of us have spent like three, four months really getting ready for this stuff, but some of you have spent whatever time you have. You know, that's that's the time you spent on it. That's what you deem value. Um, so you spent that time on it. Don't question that because someone else is doing something. Like, just don't. Just don't. Okay? So don't panic. Panicking is also bad. If you have to take a shot of tequila or something beforehand, do it. I don't care. But don't panic and don't worry about what other people are doing. Go with your own logic and go with whatever's been working for you on these last however many mock drafts and you'll be fine. Yeah, no, I think I think that's a good rule. It's it, you know, sticking to what you believe in is so critical here, unless you truly just don't trust your own self, right? If yeah, you which don't is feel a lot like of people. you're a Right. If you don't feel like you're a true good source of information to draft accurately, then yes, you probably want to follow people that you respect or trust or, you know, feel like have led you the the right way in the past. And so um, I understand that. But if you have done the research, you can de it's so easy to get mind fucked. Sorry. Uh, in During draft or pre draft or like one hour before yeah. draft, you enter the draft chat. Right. People are staying saying stuff. Anything can trigger you a certain way. Like it's like, yeah. oh, did you see the news about Cooper Cup? And you're like, shit, what happened? And all of a sudden <laughs> yeah. you're like in a flux, right? So that actually segues into my final thing very, really well. Do not factor recency bias if other variables variables mm -hmm. have changed. And this mm -hmm. is something that you talked about, about don't get too emotional. It's this, it's, it's the simplest way I can put it is you drafted a player last year and they did bad. They did bad for X, Y, Z reasons. If right. this year, those same reasons do not present themselves there or there are variables that have changed, you have to remove that bias from your brain. You can choose not to draft that player. You can choose to have them lower in your ranks, but you can't use last year's piece of information if it doesn't have a direct correlation here as your reasoning for avoiding this player or drafting this player for that matter, right? So, uh, yeah. you know, like a simple example um, damn, I had one off the top of my head and now I can't think of one, but it's, uh, it's, you're, you're drafting a player essentially that last year, let's, uh, show it, show it last year earlier, talked about how he had Chris Olave and he didn't think that Chris Olave, uh, did super well for him last year, right? Inconsistency week in and week out wasn't producing to the way he could have been. Now that to me is actually a pretty decent example of somebody that you could use that factor this year because the reality is his situation ultimately has not changed that much. Same head coach and head coach that is defensive minded, same quarterback, right? No other skill positions have been added to the team or left the mm -hmm. team for that matter. So everything is pretty much the same. So if you wanted to use that logic on somebody like Chris Olave, I absolutely would respect that. Other example, last year, Jalen Waddle on and off the field, right? Injury prone is what he is already being labeled. When in reality, just two years ago, Jalen Waddle as the wide receiver two on his own team with Tyreek Hill was yep. a top 12 fantasy finisher as a wide receiver two. He is playing wide receiver one ball as a wide receiver two in 12 man leagues. And everybody has forgotten about that. Everybody has labeled him injury prone. <laughs> he comes with yeah. injury risk for sure. But that is last year and that he's in a short uh, part of his career so far to where you can't peg that as him only being injury prone and you can't peg the year before as him being not. So all you can do is draft to what you know is proven. And what's proven is when he's healthy, production is there. You can't draft based on injury. I've preached that to the choir. So to those two examples to me are why recency bias can be useful, but so many people use it in like a, I had him last year. He was just so like, eh, for me, man, yeah. it was like a vibe thing and you won't draft him again when there's no real research or rhyme or reason put into it other than vibes. And trust me, I've been guilty of that. That's why I'm bringing it to the <laughs> forefront. Don't be the vibes guy. Yeah, dude. So accurate. So accurate. There's, you know, I always tell people, um, there's, you got to look deeper into each player to really know how they can be, how they can perform on your team. Like I, I look at this like a job interview, man. Like I'm not even messing around with you. I look at each player and I look at how will they perform well together to give me 120 points every single week, right? Like that's that has always been the approach. That has always been the approach. And um, you know, if we start worrying about, you know, for here's here's the other side of the example, CD Lamb, right? CD Lamb. Everybody's out here. I mean, I drafted this dude in basically every league I could think of last year because I already kind of saw the potential. It, it was always there, right? It was always there. Mm -hmm. And now, and now, nothing has changed since last year. Okay, nothing has really changed. The wide receiver situation is really iffy, but it's still the same uh, quarterback. They're going to be throwing a lot, just like they were last year. 
no significant changes, right? We're still expecting him to get major volume. People are forgetting that there's other wide receivers that exist. You know, people are forgetting the best wide receiver in the league conversations. Jamar Chase is not even in that conversation anymore, right? And yeah. when just two years goes torching Baltimore, like twice a year, every year, you know, it's things like that. You got to remember it is so sweetheart on, on that point, you know, on that point, recency bias has injuries involved. It has uh, players that let you down involved, but it also has players that performed well involved. Yep. So for me, yep. when I look at, when I look at Tyreek Hill and um, CD lamb, I had them both last year. I had them both last year. Right. So no That's bias nice. here. It, yeah, it, it was, it was phenomenal. And when I have to evaluate both of them individually, I will never give CD Lamb the reins. Like for me, it's Tyreek Hill all day. Like I'm not forgetting what this guy's capable of. He's capable of insane things. CD Lamb is capable of good things. CD Lamb is cap capable of great things. But Tyreek Hill is capable of insanity and he's proven it to us. So for me, it's like having two children and loving them both. But you know, deep down inside, one's going to Harvard and one is not. So it's like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. As, to keep it plain and simple, you are absolutely dead on with all the bias stuff for sure. Yeah, it's it's really tough. I mean, it's like a human psychological element that you have to like remove for something as simple as playing fantasy football, but it gets in the way. It gets in the way for me all the time. Yeah. I we we've talked about it for years playing fantasy football. I'm like, I don't know what it is about this guy. I just feel like he would never be on my team, but he's always gonna do really good. Why why do I have this preconceived notion about a player for no reason? Yeah, yeah. yeah those it's answers crazy. are there. If the, yeah. the answers are there. You know, you just don't, you, yeah. it's just not there. You just can't yeah. see it, but it's there. You, you, you have the yeah. notions. Yeah. You have to look, you have to really look for it and then you find it. Cause the answer is right in front of you. But, yeah. um, that, that is all I personally had. Um, I, I had one that I think I've adopted more so recently. And again, I, I continue to bring this up because it's the, it's what I think that you tend to do. And you have a, a tremendous amount of success with this is when you're drafting, I, I always say like, I, I don't always say that. I take that back. What I've started to say now is swing uh -huh. to win, right? Swing mm -hmm. to win. I just feel like too many times I'm presented with the opportunity to take a guy that I know has tremendous amount of upside, upside mm -hmm. that could win me the league, right? Win me the league. That's the mm -hmm. project projection. But I also have this guy that I know has had proven production and it's so easy to like want that consistency, something you know that's tangible, that has been present. But mm -hmm. you also understand that when comparing floors and ceilings, that this guy offers way higher of a ceiling, but it's so easy to want to know that that floor is always going to be there for you. And I think yeah. that, the years that I have won fantasy football, knowingly or unknowingly, I took swings in the draft, right? Whether I thought gotcha. it was a swing or I was like, you know, this to me is a surefire because I have him ranked higher. But in grand yeah. scheme of things, it was a swing. And I think that's what wins. The year I didn't take the swing, I didn't draft CMC because I was worried he was injury prone. And he was coming off back-to-back -back injured seasons. But again, removing last year's bias, removing that yeah. lens that I'm now am preaching I, if I had drafted CMC there, I think everything would have turned out differently. So I think for yeah. me, what I've adopted now is I, I, I'm swinging in the draft when I'm presented with an opportunity where I'm like, do I want some stability or do I want somebody that can also offer me stability, but has such higher upside to win me fantasy football, not just keep yeah. me in the game, not just keep me in the running week to week, win me fantasy football. That's what I'm swinging for. Yeah, absolutely. The only room in fantasy football for people to uh, be safe is during bye weeks, right? During yep. bye weeks, you want sustainability. You want at least 10 points. Like that's what I look for in bye weeks. That's the safety net. All other times, I, I, I'm not playing this safe because in any given Sunday, anybody's team can drop 140 and I want to be one of those guys. So, yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. Do you have anything else to add? Any other final last minute advice for people who are drafting this week? Oh man, I mean, you you guys really need to start listening to this podcast. Like, I'm not even playing. At what point? At what point do I need to cut this out, make it a sound, and just put it on repeat every single day on every single story? Just listen to us, man. We've been on this podcast for what, like four years now, four and years, I think, yeah. And you know, this is the fourth year, um, and all we've done is just dropped information for you to do better. And people come up to us all the time and are like, "Hey, how do you guys keep winning?" Well, here it is. Here is the formula. Listen to it. If not, if not, you know, the whole year, start now. Listen to this episode moving forward. This is critical stuff that we're giving to you, analyzing all other people's information plus ours and giving you the best versions of each of those. So it's time, guys. It's time. You really want to start doing some damage on your fantasy football leagues. You really got to start paying attention.
Yeah. Shout out to the people that do pay attention. It's pretty evident, especially when we play yeah. with you in the league. I can see what the way you draft and stuff that sure. you have been listening. Um, and I just think, again, it's crazy that we are in as competitive of a league that, that as we are in, as are most people that, you know, want to talk about fantasy football like this for a living or do their leagues are competitive because they're passionate. Right. Yeah. So we are just bestowing our secrets and knowledge to the people that we play with that we yeah. are competing with for money, you know, that we are uber competitive with, we're giving all the secrets away. So, I mean, it's really all up to you to just click the button and press play and listen, man. So um, for those of you that tune in, thank you so much for all the support. Like, subscribe, do all the cool stuff. Uh, if you're um, listening, you can find us anywhere. You get your podcast platform, socials, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Good luck with your draft. Uh, you know, turn back to this if you have any questions. Shoot us DMs if you have any questions. I don't yeah. care. I'll answer as many fantasy football questions as possible. That is my Twitter. That is his Twitter. I am Sweetheart. That is Shashow. We are the only playbook. Good luck on your drafts. We will see you guys next week.